let's uh, let's jump in on the um, tax on uh, stock buyback. So so here's the story. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act was uh, negotiated by Schumer and uh, Manchin. And this is the Build Back Better. You remember Build Back Better uh, that uh, Biden proposed? It was going to be a $4 trillion proposal. Then it was going to be a $2 trillion proposal. Then it was going to be a $1 trillion proposal. And Manchin basically said, nah, I'm not, I'm not going for it. I'm not accepting it. Nothing of it. Um, and then he, he went into, I don't know, some bar or some coffee shop or some basement with Schumer, and things happened over there. Who knows what happened, but uh, Manchin was convinced to support a revised Build Back Better, to call it an Inflation Reduction Act. We'll talk about whether it reduces inflation later on. And, um, and to sign on to it, and, and part of this act involves raising certain taxes, and we'll talk about those taxes when we talk about the bill itself. I want to focus now on, on one particular tax. Uh, originally, what Manchin had proposed was that as part of this, they get rid of the carried interest, uh, basically the ca carried interest uh, for private equity. And I think it was just for private equity. Carried interest is, uh, you know, private equity and hedge funds typically at the end of the year, you calculate how much profit the fund made, and 20% of the profit is part of your compensation as a manager of a hedge fund or a um, or private equity fund. Sometimes it's 10%, sometimes 15%, 20% is relatively in the high end. Some funds that I know have charged 40% of the profit. But anyway, this percentage of the profit has always historically been taxed as a capital gains, as a long-term capital gains, and therefore uh, at a lot lower rate than regular income. Uh, and it's, it's it, basically, it's viewed as capital gains because it's a result of the gain in value of the enterprises that the business invested in and it's a, it's a percentage of the total gain, 20% of the total gain. So it, there's a logic to why it's capital gains. It is capital, after all, uh, and not regular income, and therefore it's tax as a capital gain. Um, well, Democrats have hated this for a very long time, some Republicans as well. Um, I think there was already a shrinking of uh, or limitation on how this is calculated for the purpose of calculating capital gains. Uh, under the uh, Trump bill from uh, uh, Trump tax bill from four years ago from uh, 2018. So this is not a popular um, way to tax private equity and uh, hedge funds. Uh, Republicans and Democrats hate generally hate private equity and uh, and hedge funds. Uh, so this is a this is one they always go after and uh, Manchin and Schumer included this as a way to raise revenue because one of the things Manchin insisted is, if you're going to spend money on, quote, climate change, then I insist you, 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 know, you raise some money as well, right? That, that, that it's, it, this is not just deficit spending. That, that was the idea. So they had originally in this bill, they had this idea of getting rid uh, of changing the, um, and I know this is pretty technical, but it's important that they had this idea that, that, that get rid of the uh, carried interest and tax it as regular income, and they were going to raise, I don't know, $80 billion or $100 billion, uh, from this closing, uh, from this uh, difference. But then the only person I know out there, well, except for me and a bunch of economists, the only politician I know who actually likes the carried interest tax rate the only politician I know is Cinema, uh, the senator from uh, the, the the Democratic senator from Arizona. Cinema loves the carried interest lower tax rate. Now, why does she love it? God knows, but I think primarily because she gets a lot of money from private equity firms. Private equity firms contribute huge amounts of money to a PAC that supports her. Um, and, uh, and she is kind of known as the carried interest 
private equity senator, like just like Bob Dole was the ethanol senator. Cinema is the carried interest cinema uh, uh, senator. It's, try saying that fast. Carried interest cinema senator. Senator cinema. Cinema, senator cinema. Carried interest senator cinema. Say that fast 20 times. Anyway, Democrats, in order to get this bill passed, they need every single sen Democratic senator to vote for it. Every single one of them. They can't lose cinema. So cinema basically went into a bunker last week in Arizona somewhere um, and came out of the bunker at some point late last week and said, no, w w we can't have this increase in taxes on uh, carried interest. Uh, that stays. That, that's not going to change. Instead, how about we tax stock buybacks? So for one kind of little item on a tax bill that nobody gives a damn about to another little item on a tax bill that nobody cares about. But it's all about who's lobbying for whom and nobody's lobbying against the tax on stock buybacks because there's nobody directly loses, nobody directly gains. There's no, there's no, you know, special interest group. There's no pressure group out there, specific pressure group that can go, yeah, we're, we're going to fight stock buyback taxes. I mean, it probably is, but they haven't had time to organize yet. So instead of this, we're going to have a stock buyback tax in the Inflation Reduction Act that's going to raise about the equivalent of what they expected to raise with the, capital, with the carried interest. Don't know how high this tax is going to be. Uh, all the articles I read, I couldn't find how high it's going to be, when it's going to go into effect, who it's going to affect. Um, but it is definitely a tax that's going to be raised um, and uh, a new tax, completely new tax that doesn't exist today on stock buyback. So I thought, and that is a very long introduction, I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about stock buybacks because the other thing I read the other day, which was really interesting, was that Apple has just issued a bunch of bonds. In other words, Apple has gone out there and borrowed five, I can't remember how many, $50 billion, I mean, some astronomical amount of money. They borrowed some astronomical amount of money in the capital markets from bondholders at a, I don't know, I think at 5 6% because Apple can raise money at very low rates because it's a very, quote, safe company. And they're using that money, among other things, to buy back their stock, which is interesting. Now, why would you go into debt to buy back your stock? That seems strange, right? Seems strange. So what is Apple doing? And is Apple still going to do it when now the stock buyback is going to be taxed by the Democrats? It's going to be ta by, taxed by Congress. So what are stock buybacks? So think about a company like Apple, or, or, or for that matter, any profitable company out there that, is, that has stock trading on the exchange. And um, stock uh, trading on the exchange, and um, that stock is linked to, obviously, the, the future profitability of the company. And, uh, you know, if, if uh, and the company has a lot of cash, because it's very profitable, has a lot of cash on its books. What, it, what can it do with that cash? What can it do with that cash? Because shareholders don't like it when companies have a lot of cash on their books. Why, why don't shareholders like it when companies have a lot of cash in their books? Well, what are they going to, you know, you don't get a lot of interest on the, on the cash. Like, uh, the company is generating a profit, a return on equity, a return on asset, but the cash is just sitting there. It's not getting a return. It's getting, what, what are the checking accounts pay these days? What are, some low interest rate that's ridiculous. So it's not a very good use of the company's money just sitting there as cash on the books. So shareholders want the company to do something with that cash. Now, what are the possibilities of what the company could do? Well, the company could invest the money. But what kind of investments are going to make shareholders happy? What kind of investments 
are going to make shareholders happy? Well, the kind of investments that generate a significant return, a return that is greater or equal to, like, what kind of the stock returns. So the investment that the company makes has to be a, um, what we call a net positive value, net present value, right? In, in present value terms, it has to be positive. Once we look at all the investment, money in, and all the money coming out, all the profits coming back, and we discount it to today, it has to be profitable. So that's one thing the company could do with the money. Oh, by the way, there's another reason why shareholders don't like companies to have a lot of stock on their books. One is it just sits there and it doesn't get a return. What's the second one? Anybody know what the second one is? Curious if you know what the other reason is. The shareholders don't want companies to sit on a lot of cash in their bank account. Because companies with a lot of cash in their bank accounts can get lazy and cocky and wasteful. There's no urgency to being efficient. There's no urgency to being profitable. There's no urgency to maximize shareholder wealth because they have a lot of cash. If they have a bad year, they can use some of the cash, no problem. Right? Whereas if you don't have cash on the books, now if you have a bad year, you have to go to capital markets and ask for capital. You have to do something about it. Or maybe you have to trim expenses. You have to change the kind of maybe operations. You have to find ways to make the business profitable so that you can get, so that you can survive. So companies get big, lazy, sluggish, uncompetitive when they have a lot of cash on the books. And they don't suffer when they do badly quite as fast, quite as well. Okay, so that's two reasons. And one way in which to get rid of that cash, invest it in projects, in businesses that can generate cash, generate, sorry, generate profit for the business, for the underlying corporation, for the shareholders. Second thing you can do with the cash, you can give it to shareholders. You can give it to shareholders. It's theirs. It's money you don't need right now. Let's say you don't have any good investments. You can just give it to shareholders. Now, how do you give it to shareholders? Well, there are two ways of giving it to shareholders. One is you can give it to them through dividends. You can pay them a dividend. And most companies, most corporations pay dividends. You can increase the dividend. Or you can have a one-time dividend and give them the cash. The problem with the dividend is the dividends are taxed like regular income. So shareholders don't particularly want you to pay them a dividend because the tax rate is pretty high. Ah, but there's another way you can give it to shareholders. You can buy back their stock. You can buy back their stock. Now, if you buy back their stock, they pay and they make a profit because you bought the stock at a higher price. They make a profit, they pay capital gains on that stock. That capital gains is taxed at a lower rate. So stock buybacks are a way of companies to deliver the cash to shareholders and allow them to take on a lower tax rate. A lower tax rate, right? Now note that uh, capital gains taxes and dividend taxes are a form of double taxation. Because remember that the corporation gets taxed, and then it takes its after-tax dollars and hands out the dividends or the stock buyback, and then it's taxed again at the individual level. So um, dividends uh, in, in capital gains are double taxation, double jeopardy. It should be banned. Uh, just, just something else that's of interest 
since we're talking about all this and corporate taxes and everything, hopefully this is interesting to you guys. Corporations don't pay taxes and businesses don't pay tax. Corporations don't pay taxes on the, di on the interest payments they make on the debt that they take. So for example, if I want to fund a project as a, as a business, it's cheaper for me to borrow money than to raise money in the stock market because the interest I pay on the borrowed money is not taxed. You deduct it from earnings, so you don't pay corporate taxes on it. But the dividends I pay are taxed at the corporate level and in the individual level. The interest gets paid, it, it, taxed only at the individual level. So, by the way, that's a way to make sure that businesses, uh, you know, businesses are over leveraged. They have too much debt. So one way to guarantee that businesses will have too much debt is to do what I just described, which is exactly what's going on in America today. Right? Now, we're going to triple tax, triple tax, three taxes, stock buybacks. We're going to tax them. At the level, we're going to tax the income at the level of the corporate tax. We're going to tax the capital gains at the level of the individual when they sell their stock. And we're going to tax the transaction. So what our Democratic senators are saying to us, what Democrats more broadly are saying to us is, we don't want businesses to give shareholders their money back. We don't want businesses to give the money to the people who actually own the business, right? There's a, there's a good quote. Let me see. If I, yeah, this, here's the quote from Schumer, right? Or it's Chuck Schumer. He says, I hate stock buybacks. Everybody hates stock buybacks. I think they're one of the most self-serving things that corporate America does. Companies instead should be investing in worker training, research, modernizing equipment, and other activities. Now, should companies always be investing in worker training, research, modernizing equipment, and other activities? Not if they have negative economic value. If they have a negative economic value, they shouldn't be investing in those things. And if a corporation can't find good investments for their money, they should return the money to shareholders. It's theirs. And it's not self-serving for the managers, for the, quote, corporation, whatever the hell that is. It is self-serving for shareholders, but it's their corporation. It's private property. It's, I mean, this campaign against stock buybacks has been going on for like 20 years. I've been hearing about it. Finally, Democrats seem to figure it out how to stop share buybacks by taxing them. When you tax something, you get less of it. Um, but from an economics perspective, from purely economics perspective, this is insanity. It's destructive. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a way uh, to reduce value in corporate America. It's to reduce share value. By the way, why did, um, why did Apple take on debt in order to buy back stocks? It's a, it's a tax and interest rate arbitrage. You can, the return on Apple stock is much higher than interest rates. So they'd Match rather, this is the consequence of the Federal Reserve keeping interest rates so low. We have real negative interest rates in the United States right now. Borrow money at negative interest rates. Give the, you know, give the money to shareholders. The interest you pay on the debt that you took is tax deductible. So that negative interest rate is even lower. Negative real interest rate, right? Given inflation is at 9% you're paying 7%, that's a negative 2% real interest rate. And if you then can deduct from taxes, it's even lower than that. That's a beautiful thing. I would do that all day long. I would do that all day long. If I could increase my mortgage right now at the interest rate that I got it at, three and, and, and three quarters, 
Now, I can't deduct the mortgage interest in Puerto Rico, but if, if you're in the United States, you have fixed rate mortgage for 30 years at, I don't know, 3 4%, and you can increase that loan. Of course you should increase that loan. Because as inflation speeds up, the, the nominal value of your home goes up. The value of your debt doesn't. It goes down. And you, you make a killing. So, yeah. So this is just... It's just... This is the kind of tax that's infuriating. It's the kind of tax that nobody is going to really speak up against. You're not seeing Republicans apoplectic about this. Nobody cares about this because this is stock buybacks. Everybody hates that. But it is an unbelievably destructive tax. It's the kind of tax that's going to have all kinds of little impacts out there, going to change corporate behavior, going to change the way businesses do business. It's going to increase the amount of cash that corporations have on their books. It's going to make corporations just a little bit lazier, a little bit less efficient, a little bit prone to invest in stupid projects. And it's not something anybody's going to rush to get rid of. It's one of those things that once they get instituted is going to be with us forever. And super destructive, completely stealth. Nobody out there cares. So cinema, cinema changed it from carried interest to this. I mean, carried interest would have been a disaster as well. It would have had hurt the private equity industry, which is an incredibly important industry. Um, you know, but again, nobody would have cared about that. Again, as I said, the, the Trump bill from 2018 already started to shrink the carried interest. So it, it, it truly is one of these little tweaks they make to tax code that ultimately is going to have profound impacts down the road. And this is the kind of analysis you won't hear in anybody else's show. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.